It is called Carb Day at Indy, and although there haven't been carburetors on the cars for some two decades, this is the final tune-up for all the teams and drivers before race day. And to no one's surprise, it was pole sitter Sam Hornish Jr. who led the speed charts when the day was done. Welcome to Sports Center, presented by Weber Grills at the Indianapolis 500. We welcome you to Sports Center at the Indianapolis 500, along with Scott Goodyear and Rusty Wallace. I'm Jerry Punch. Glad to have you with us. Now, during the next half hour, we're going to hear from all your favorite drivers. Yes, all 33 starters will share their thoughts on Sunday's big race, and we'll do it alphabetically from Marco Andretti all the way back to Roger Yasakawa. But first, let's talk about Carb Day here on Friday. At the Speedway, no one was surprised whatsoever that Sam Hornish Jr., Scotty, was the quickest of the afternoon. He's been fast all month, Doc. When you look at it, you know, with the exception of one day where Danny Weldon beat him to the top of the charts. He's been the guy to beat here at Indianapolis. Now, he did have a mishap on the weekend. He regained himself. He's got to go back out and get his confidence to get ready for the race on Sunday. And I think this was the perfect thing for him. Nice clean laps and nice great speed back at top of the speed charts. Now just think about the next couple of days getting ready for the race itself. All right, let's take a look at the top five speeds today. There is Hornish, 220 and change. Scott Sharp, a bit of a surprise in second overall in speed. There's the target Ganassi teammates, Dixon and Weldon third and fourth. Tony Kanaan, the lone eight GR guy in the top five, and yes, Danica Patrick, 218 and change. She was 12th quickest today. After Carb Day was over, our Marlo Kling caught up with the pole sitter. Did you guys find the balance, the consistency that you were looking for? Yeah, I mean, even last Sunday, we were real happy with the balance of, of the first run that we did, and then, uh, you know, today, you know, the car was really good in traffic. You know, basically everything we wanted it to be, but the conditions were quite a bit slower because of all the wind that we had, and uh, I, I think we haven't had that much, quite that much wind so far, so it was a little bit tough to get everything just right. Same over the past couple of days, I had a chance to ask all 33 drivers who their pick was to win this race, and you were the overwhelming pick to win. Do you feel like you are the favorite? I mean, we've been quick, you know, pretty much all month and sit on the pole for the race. Um, I'd like to think so, but I know that there's so many things that can happen and that can take you out of the race. We're not going to get overconfident about it. We just feel that we need to make it to the end of the race. You know, I came into this race this year going, you know, there's no reason that we shouldn't be able to win. The only thing that there, that there is is, uh, you know, if we take it ourselves out of it, don't finish all 500 miles. So that's our goal is just finish the 500 miles, and I think that we're going to be right up there. Well, Rusty Sam's teammate, Elio Castro Nevis, was just ninth quickest today, some two miles an hour slower than Sam. What was Elio's problem? They had a wing problem today, Jerry. His car, the wing angle kept getting higher and higher, slowing the straightaway speed down. Now, how that's happening, I really don't understand. That team's got a lot of depth, and I feel like they're definitely going to recover with that. They won the pit stop contest. They're looking great. They got a lot of confidence. Well, you know, all month long we've talked about the Penske drivers and the Target Ganassi drivers running strong, but Scott Dixon was third quickest today, followed by his teammate Dan Weldon, third and fourth. That's got to be pretty good. And Scott, that team has to be feeling pretty good about what could happen on Sunday. You know, they just keep going faster and faster. The momentum keeps building. You know, when Dixon goes along, things very quietly just to get the job done. He's been impressive and he's third quickest today. As you mentioned, both cars in the 219, high 219s, very impressive. And Weldon himself, he's my pick, you know, to turn around and come back and win. He just keeps on doing a great job also. And I think he's got the tenacity to go and prove to everybody that he can do it with Target Chip Ganassi, not just the Andretti Green team. You know, both those drivers felt pretty good about their chances after today up on Sunday. I think we've got a car that's definitely fast enough to, to, to be able to win. I think, um, you know, Honda obviously give you a very reliable package, knock on wood. And, uh, you know, I, I feel that I, I drive well around this track, but anything can happen at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, but you just got to do the best you can and see where I put you towards the end. On Sunday, I didn't, I didn't like the car whatsoever, so I made a lot of changes. The tire wheel is a lot better for us today. Uh, the conditions don't seem to be that bad. Um, you know, we, we were pretty comfortable. I think both cars are looking pretty good. Rusty, we're talking so much about Team Target Ganassi and Team Penske, but you can't overlook Scott Sharp. He was second quickest in this final session today. Jerry, he's got so much confidence, it's unreal. He's very, very confident what's going on. His car's handling great throughout the month. And when you talk to Scott, he's just all pumped up and ready to go. So this guy is definitely fired up. He's got a great handling car. You know, he's passionate about wanting to win here, obviously. He, you know, he sat on the pole here back in 2001 and desperately wants to win this race. Now, now Scott, what about the tale of the two Andrettis? You know, Michael Andretti and his 19-year-old son, Marco. Marco, seventh fastest today in Carb Day. Michael, way back in 16th. 
What's wrong with uh, Michael? Why the discrepancy in speed? You know, he stayed out there very late on practice, right until the very end of it. So maybe searching for speed. It's very hard to say what he was up to. But Marco continues to impress. I'm not sure that he will really be a factor in the race because he is a rookie. There's a lot going on here, but he just continues to impress us, and I'm sure that he's got a lot of help from his teammates. Michael, as I said, out there looking for speed throughout the complete day, maybe struggling for speed throughout the month. Remember, he's coming back out of retirement. He's not been here since 2003, so that's a long time out of the season for Michael Andretti. I think Michael's playing some possum. I think he'll be there on race day. As we go to break, we'll begin our alphabetical rundown of the field. So we start with the fastest rookie of the month, 19-year-old Marco Andretti. You have to prepare like every other race. You know, it is a big race, but uh, and there's going to be a lot of emotions the first couple laps, but then once you settle in, it's just another race. It's going to come down to the teams as well, and, and uh, you know, who makes the best guess is really what it's going to be. I mean, you can have a lot of experience, but still, things are always different, so we'll see. It's Indy, and it just seems like because it is the Indy 500, it's supposed to have drama. It's supposed to be difficult, um, and no doubt it's going to be a, a long, long race. It's the same for everybody. So, you know, we all go out and in the first few laps, you're just, it's really about feeling, feeling the car out, feeling the track out and trying to get an idea of just what kind of grip you have. I've been saying all week, you know, this is the first time I've, I've been here in the month of May where I truly feel like I have a chance to win the race. It's about three hours of race. You ha definitely need to know uh, what to expect. And, uh, but everybody's going with that mentality. So it'll be hard anyway. Uh, people, especially with the month of May, not being the same, same circumstances. So, hey, uh, I've been there twice so um, hopefully we're gonna be a uh, work for the third time sports center presented by Weber grills at the Indianapolis 500 brought to you by Weber making the world a better place one grill at a time and in part by Dockers San Francisco Part of the Cobb Carb Day competition, the Checkers Rally Pit Stop Challenge, and Roger Penske's guys have won it eight years previously. First semifinal, Elio Castroneves, Buddy Rice. Elio's guys get it done, 7.73 seconds. Second semifinal, Dario Franchita gets his teammate, and Dario now, he's in the final. Michael Andretti loving what he sees here. Okay, the final round, Elio versus Dario. Both got in evenly, but it's Elio Castroneves' guys. Rick Reinemann and company, 8.08 seconds, and Elio wins it. And you know how Spider-Man celebrates? He climbs the fence. From the hottest driver in pit stop competition to the hot weather. Well, they said the forecast for Sunday calls for temperatures in the high 80s. It could be the hottest Indy 500 in more than 50 years. How will the heat impact the teams come race day? We asked some of the drivers to give us their thoughts. We haven't done any running in the seat, so who knows what the car is going to be like. Um, we've had the craziest wind conditions. We've had lots of rain, very green track every time we went out there. So I think the race will be uh, will be different. I think race day we're going to have to go with more downforce, and you're going to see you know, probably cars are going to slow down quite a bit. Um, and the track's probably going to get a little slipperier, so uh, it's hard to know right now. For us, you know, we didn't test it so much. You know, we came here, we did a total of uh, 70 laps. Uh, and you know that conditions though it's not going to play a lot to us i think the speed's going to drop a lot but um you know unfortunately i think hot weather and and the tires how they've been uh you know going off so quick i think it's going to you know might be a lot of crashes this year my race sunday is going to be very interesting because uh, we're changing my complete car setup right now and and uh since i only have one engine to run here i only have about five laps i can run on practice on friday so it's going to be uh, i've got a lot of question marks going to be answered when we go to turn one best the cars felt all month in traffic so i'm, I'm surprised with with that it's especially given the temperatures, and I'm a lot more confident and happy going into the race now. Um, I put myself in a lot of heavy traffic, so not conducive to doing fast lap times, but definitely happy with it, and I think we've got a good race car now. Well, guys, how will the hot temperatures temperatures on Sunday impact the race? Well, really in two factors. Number one, the cars and the drivers is going to be number two. The cars themselves will not have as much grip going around the turn, so they'll have to put more downforce on the cars to make them handle just a little bit better. Inside the cockpits, 135, 40 degrees, somewhere around there. And, Rusty, we don't get the sets of cool suits like you guys do in NASCAR, <laughs> so these guys are really going to be athletes I, on I Sunday. I hear you, Scott. It's, uh, you know, by all means, it's not going to be a real, real hot out there. It's 85 degrees. It's going to be hotter than these guys have ever practiced all month long, so it's not like it's 100. But they're going to have lack of downforce compared to what they're accustomed to, so they're going to have to adjust for that, whether it's lower air pressure settings or higher wing angles. 
Okay, according to the National Weather Service, uh, the hottest Indy 500 in history was 91 degrees back in 1953, and the forecast for Sunday calls for up almost 90 degrees when the green flag waves. Well, Danica Patrick made history in last year's Indy 500, becoming the first woman to ever lead a lap here at Indy. Her fourth place finish in the race was also the highest ever by a female driver. But apparently, Danica's accomplishments have yet to impress the king of stock car racing, Richard Petty. As Petty's quote, I don't think women, it's a sport fort for women, and so far it's proved out. It's really not. It's good for them to come in. It gives us a lot of publicity. It gives them publicity. But as far as being a real true racer, making a living out of it, it's kind of tough. Here's what Danica had to say about the King's comment. I think it's a little bit confusing, but um, one of the things about older guys is that they're old school. So there wasn't a lot of girls around then. Um, and they're pretty set in their ways, so I guess that would be that would be the problem. Maybe it's a generation gap, I guess. Well, guys, what do you think about Richard Petty's comments? Boy, I guess I agree with Danica, you know, and I think she, what she says is about old school. I mean, there's 32 other drivers out here on race day that will agree that Danica Patrick has everything she needs to go out there and do the job. We saw what she did last year by taking the lead of this event and leading 19 laps. You know, she gets the job done, and times have changed, Rusty. I think that uh, you need to go down there and talk to your friend, the King, because <laughs> I think he's, uh, he's, he's behind a little bit, a few decades. Oh, man, I got to tell you, you know, everybody's got an opinion, don't they? It's just not my opinion. I just don't agree with what Richard you're saying there. Well, I agree a little bit, Richard Petty. It, it is difficult to make a living in this sport, but it isn't gender specific. Both men and women are going to have a tough time as competitive as auto racing is. Well, let's continue our alphabetical rundown of the field. So far, we've covered the letters A through F. Now it's time for the letter G, so let's get some race predictions, starting with the driver who will start from the outside of row seven, Felipe Giafoni. I think Elio would be the, the one to, to beat, you know. I think uh, he, he won it twice and, and they've been very hooked up. I think Hornish looks pretty good. I'm going to pick Michael just because it'd be such a, such a cool deal for him to come back and, you know, he should have won it so many other times to, uh, to see him get that win. I had to pick Elio. I mean, obviously he knows how to do it. You know, he was fast here in 2001 and was able to do it and then he was not very fast. I mean, he was running like 14th or 15th all day in 2002. I think if you didn't bet on Sam right now, I mean, it seems like he's got everything Thing going on. I mean, you know, Penske and Ganassi. I think outside, uh, outside that, I think I take Buddy Rice. Then, then well, because he knows this place. He figures it out pretty good, and uh, I believe that uh, I know the guy too well. So uh, that, that's probably not a fair shot. I should have picked somebody else. But uh, if you give Dan a sniff to win this thing again, trust me, he, nobody's gonna beat him. Welcome back to Sports Center, presented by Weber Grills at the Indianapolis 500. I expect one car from deep in the field to surprise a lot of people, come out of nowhere. Um, and uh, it's going to be a very challenging day for a driver and crew. I think with, with that kind of temperature, a lot of the drivers are going to be very uh, hesitant at the beginning. Uh, obviously, it's a long race. We're going to all, all try to just get through to the, the last 50 laps and then go racing from there. I don't know what to expect, actually, to tell you the truth. Um, this being my first IndyCar race, um, and definitely at this facility, it's going to be awesome. But um, I don't know what to expect. This three weeks, you know, we are running like a 50 to 60 degrees condition. And then a Sunday, immediately 90. Degrees and nobody knows what's going on. We hope to go through the race without making any mistakes. I mean, uh, our goal is uh, make a good start and uh, make sure that I mean everything will be fine. That our car will be running well in traffic. What I can tell you is, is that a lot of cars are going to be good and a lot of cars are going to turn to really uh, we're going to turn to real bad. So that's uh, that's uh, it's going to be a kind of a maybe a equalizer because then everybody's going to go off of data, which everybody has the same more or less. On Carb Day, we were also treated to the fourth annual running of the Freedom 100 for the Indy Pro Series cars. And pole sitter Wade Cunningham had led every lap until that pass right there when Jay Howard makes the move on the inside. The Englishman for Howard, running only his fourth ever Indy Pro Series event, tries to hold off, but Cunningham would not be denied. The reigning series champion on the white flag lap makes the move. Can it hold on? Yes, the high group, he said he had some grip on the outside. He makes the pass, Howard can't catch him. And in his second career victory ever, Wade Cunningham, a defending series champion, wins the Freedom 100 at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. 
Well, for the fifth time in the last 20 years, Team Penske has grabbed the top two starting spots for this year's Indianapolis 500. Pole sitter Sam Hornish Jr. lines up alongside his teammate Elio Castroneves. Now, both Penske drivers spent part of their race week away from the track, relaxing, sort of. It was quite a bit tighter than my normal suit. Probably the favorite part of it was watching them do the aerial tricks where they uh, they do like back flips and front flips and double flips and somehow they always manage to splash you right as they come down. What an awesome creature as they take their first step. I mean, you can feel their backbones kind of turning. Unbelievable feeling. You want like a, a mink coat? How about this one? Or how about the pink? I'm feeling like the P-I-M-P, P is that right? The pink. Yeah, how are you doing? Yeah. Camera, do you like the pink? Oh man, the camera did not like the pink. So if you, if you guys see the camera, what he's wearing, so that's why I'm going against the camera. So I'm wearing pink, that's it. <laughs> you keep the head now. Say bye, see you next time. Elio, you look so good in that pink mink. Well, <laughs> let's continue our alphabetical rundown of the field. So far, we've covered the letters A through M. Now it's time for my favorite letter, P. Let's hear from the driver who will start from the outside of row six. Here's Mad Max Pappas. I will fight really hard. You know, as again, you know, maybe we're not going to be able to be up there with the speed, you know, but uh, a lot of times, you know, a good, safe, solid car, if you are behind another fast car that can tow you to the front, you can stay in the front. Usually the teams make such good compensations with the setups that um, it doesn't affect us too much. So let's hope not. Let's hope it's not another thing up we're up against this month. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I remember Indy being this hot. So I think it's going to be a, it's going to be an interesting uh, gamble, really, because everybody's going to have to gamble somewhat on setup. People are going to have to change their cars a little bit. Hopefully, a little bit of experience plays into that. Um, I've had pretty much the same car the whole month, so you know, whatever weather condition, I, I think we're ready for. In my mind, I bet this kind of weather produces more surprises. You know, guys, you think are just going to be running at the front all day, maybe don't have quite the car they're going to think they have. Whereas uh, maybe there's some some guys that you didn't think maybe their outside factors suddenly become real challengers. I don't have enough experience in this chassis and uh, I don't know how it really even reacts to the to the warm weather but um, certainly we're going to be changing our uh, setup a little bit for it. Getting Grilled brought to you by Weber making the world a better place one grill at a time. And we invite you to tune in to ABC Sports on Sunday for the 90th running of the Indianapolis 500. Pre-race coverage starts at noon Eastern time. Then at 1 o'clock, pole sitter Sam Hornish Jr. will lead the 33-car field of the green flag. ABC Sports, your home for the greatest spectacle in racing. Now, we finish our alphabetical rundown of the 33-car field with one of the most famous names in open-wheel history. We ask Al Unser Jr. if he could pick one driver besides himself to win this year's Indy 500. Who would it be? I see, you know, the, the, the Penske cars and the Target cars, they're, they're going to be the ones to beat. Dixon's going to kill me, but I, I, he's gone with my setup for the race, so it won't be him if I don't, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so I'm going to say Hornish. Without any doubt, I think Sam Hornish has been quick every day, and, uh, you know, the two Penske cars are going to be very fast, and, uh, you know, I still think Sam's going to be the man to beat for sure. All right, Scott and Rusty, I'm going to ask you to give us your race winners in just a moment. But first, I'm going to grill you in a game we call Pretender Contender. And here's how it works now. I'll throw out a name, and you tell me whether you think he or she is a pretender or contender in this year's race. Okay, Scott, we'll start with you. The target team, Dan Weldon and Scott Dixon. Well, they certainly turned in being a powerhouse team, and I have to mark them both down as a contender. Remember, Weldon won this event last year. Scott Dixon's been going along very quietly, doing a great job. I would have to say both of them have an opportunity to win this event on Sunday. How about coming? about a retirement, Rusty, Michael Andretti. Well, yeah, pretender. I hate calling an Andretti that, but I just don't think he could do it. He's been away too long. 15th career start coming back for the one race he so desperately wants to win here at in Indianapolis. 
Scotty, how about his son, Marco Andretti? Well, I marked him down as a pretender because he is a rookie, but you know, he continues to impress us. He was seventh quickest in warm up today, and even his grandfather, Mario, says, you know something? He just gets better each day he's on the racetrack. Okay, Rusty, Team Penske drivers, Hornish and Castor and Evans. Oh, definitely contenders. These guys have been the fastest two cars all month long. Definitely a contender. All right, these guys awfully quick, even in carb day. Sam Hornish at the top of the speed charts. How about a two-time Indy 500 winner, Scott Allenser Jr.? My friend Al Jr., I'm going to have to mark him down as a pretender. He's coming back out of retirement, and that's because they have been struggling for speed ever since the team got here. He has not been going very fast. I think it's going to be difficult for him to win his third here on Sunday. Rusty, how about Scott Sharp in the Delphi car? Uh, definitely a contender. He's been looking good all month long. His car is running great. He's happy with it. Definitely a contender. He was a surprise of Carb Day, second fastest in race day trim here in the final practice sessions. How about Thomas Schechter, Scott? A great team behind him, Vision Racing. I have to mark him as a pretender, though, because he's difficulty getting to the event without any type of problems. He did lead 142 laps his first time here, and he will run strong, but maybe not to the end. Tony Kanaan, last year's pole sitter, Rusty? Definitely a contender. He just keeps getting faster and faster with every session of practice he has out there. Top five for sure. Had a big smile on his face when he stepped out on the car today. He starts in the middle of row two in his fifth race at Indy. Dario Franchitti, his teammate. You know, I marked him down as a pretender. He'll probably prove me wrong on race day, but I have struggled for speed action throughout the whole month. He's not been happy with his car. I don't think he's enjoyed this month. We'll have to see how he goes on race day. Rusty, last year's race runner-up, Vitor Mira. Well, another definitely contender. This guy finished second last year in the 500. He's looking good. He's happy with his car. He's been smiling all month long. He's known for his patience in the 500 mile race, patience of virtue. How about the guy who won it in 2004, Scott? Buddy Rice. I'm going to mark him as a contender. You know, he's been diligent. He's clawed his way up the speed chart here. He's done a great job throughout the month of May. I think he's hungry because he did miss last year's event. And Rusty Danica Patrick. Oh boy, I know what I'm talking about here. She's a contender. She's got more experience and she finished fourth last year. I expect big things out of her. All right, guys, let's get your pick for the race now. Okay, Scott, you go first. Who's going to win this year's Indy 500? So many options out there. Great teams, great drivers. I'm going to have to go with Danny Weldon. I think he's going to repeat a strong team behind him. He's just going very well throughout the whole month, sitting back there, I think, working on a race car for race day. Rusty, you were right last week in picking Sam Hornish Jr. for the pole. Who's your winner for the Indy 500? Oh, boy, Jerry, this year it's going to be Scott Dixon. I've been watching his lines out there. He looks great on the racetrack, but i got to tell you, those Penske boys going to be right up his bumper. You know, both you guys are right with all these contenders here. We're going to have the most competitive Indy 500 in series history. What a day it's going to be. Now, well, all the days of practice and preparation are over. All the drivers can do now is just sit, watch, wait, and worry. Each one realizes this is one race, one day, one win that could change their life forever. 33 of the world's greatest race drivers will take the green flag, but only one will be able to do whatever it takes to win the 90th running of the Indianapolis 500. So long, everybody.